If you're trying to improve at Teamfight Tactics, you have come to the right spot. So first off, congratulations on making it here and welcome to Project Mentor. So in today's video, we're going to give a very, very, very quick overview as to what it's about. And in the rest of the video, you'll be able to meet the mentors and just get a little bit of a better sense as to who each of these individuals are. So first off, Project Mentor is a personal training program, basically a one of a kind program in the TFT space where you will be paired one on one with a mentor throughout the course of a competitive split for Teamfight Tactics. The way the program works is very simple. First, you simply apply for the program and you list the three mentors you are interested in working under. Then once the applications are closed, all of the mentors will actually interview all of the mentees one on one. Then once applications are closed, the mentors will then interview all of the interested mentees who want to work under said mentor. After the interview process, the mentors will then choose an X amount of mentees based on their bandwidth for that set. If selected, congratulations, you are now part of the program, but what exactly does the program entail? If you are accepted, this is what you can expect out of the program for set 13. First, you get two coaching sessions per week, each session being at least an hour long. On top of that, you also have a direct channel where you'll be able to message your mentor at any point throughout the set one-on-one. -on -one. You also get to partake at the end of set tourney that's exclusive to mentees only, who will then compete against each other to try to win some prizing, and this tournament acts as a great way to start learning how to prepare for tournaments and cups. And unlike last set, we are actually also including a mid-set tournament for this time around, so you'll actually get two chances to try and compete and prove what you've learned. Again, both of these tournaments will be mentee exclusive. And on top of that, you also get once a week optional group VOD review sessions where you'll be able to talk with other mentees and mentors and you'll be able to VOD review and analyze some pro games. All of those optional VOD review sessions will be led by me. Again, the program is a paid program. And it's a very highly selective program. So I highly suggest doing your research. Make sure this is something you really want to commit to. And if it is, make sure you kill that interview. But now that you know what the program is about, allow me to introduce you to the mentors via some quick interview questions. What are some of your greatest achievements as a player? Getting 2k in uh, set 10, 2100 uh, LP. Set 11, getting uh, 2k again. Coach and world review, some of the best regional players, both in EU and NA. Second place at Charima Cup, second only to the beast himself, Setsuko. So I really started playing a lot in 5.5, either set 6 or 7, I hit Challenger and I've hit Challenger every set since then, consistently Challenger and, and decently high up there. So I've been playing since set one, managed to hit Challenger, usually top Challenger, like top 50 or so. For the last few sets, hovering around like top 20. Set 10, I peaked rank one, competitive wise, day two, uh, regionals. Set eight, I was rank one at the start of the set for a few weeks, and then I went on vacation. Then later, I, I got third place in mid set and ninth place in regionals that set. People in my study groups doing well, specifically like Weijin, Malala, and recently Re Replay kind of joined and started studying with us. There's two worlds winners in there and and one regionals winner. I would like to say that even though I may not have gone to worlds, I at least helped a little bit for some people getting to worlds and winning. Player, I've achieved rank three in NA over multiple sets. In those two recent ones, rank uh, set 12, set 11. Inside of that, I was a second in the box box boot camp. And then I've competed in various uh, cups since like set five, even I've been a challenger since set four. Uh, and then outside of TFT, I've hit rank one in Clash Royale. And then a lot of TFT players know this about me, but I actually was a competitive golfer growing up. I competed in the 2010 Asian Games. As of right now, my, my greatest achievement is for sure uh, making regionals and having like a 98 plus percent chance of making worlds this set, uh, set 12. And then other than that, winning uh, Tactician's Cup three. And uh, otherwise, I think on ladder, my peak rank is like seven or six. In the past, I've hit rank one in multiple strategy games like Hearthstone, First World Battlegrounds, Lens of Runeterra, and then I migrated over to TFT. I have been challenger since the second set that I ever played, which was set four, and I've hit as high as rank three on NA. Now I play on Singapore though. I hope to hit rank one there soon as well. I won set five MSI. I've reached regionals multiple times. I usually do get over 1k LP, 1.2k LP. Pretty consistent player. Oh, and then I've reached rank three. What are some of your strongest aspects as a player? Uh, I'm definitely like not a greedy player. Most of the time when I'm playing in serious environment, I'm like playing tempo and pushing levels and uh, trying to punish the greedy fuckers. I would say I focus a lot on the on the studying part of TFT. I feel like I know how to put the time in to get good and like how to efficiently get better. I would say efficiently 
improving is is one of the the biggest things i think i'm usually pretty flexible i play a lot of different lines and if there's something i don't know i'll usually test it out my positioning i think is pretty good and i'm usually pretty good at identifying my own mistakes so i can improve i tend to be good at the start of patches or new sets specifically um because i i think i have a good intuitive grasp on like what will be strong and like i can kind of gauge the power level of you know a comp or a unit without having to go off the attacking start tool stats for multiple days i think i have a very good grasp of what is strong just based off of what i play and how i feel it is i've improved a lot at line selection and knowing what to commit to early basically knowing when to commit what to commit to early game decisions what you're holding and then i've been fairly good at this across other game sports i've done is analyzing my games from a very unbiased perspective which i can definitely help students with as well and then a very analytical background i leverage stats and data pretty thoroughly I i'm a lot less of a feel player more of you have to know what you're doing is wrong or right i think uh my stage one and two are by far my strongest aspects um as well as spot recognition um and then i, I think uh, i'm also pretty good at capping out boards uh, in, in like the super super late game i am really good at two things in particular one of them is early meta trying to optimize like the ways in which particular lines are playing is where i excel when it comes to that the second point is also like things like micro optimizations when like i like to pick like one line one comp and try to figure out like every single detail when it comes to that and optimize like how each unit should be positioned against each every other comp in the meta etc etc i'll give you strongest and worst strongest i'd say my adaptability because i like to cook a lot of times i can get like top four playing like weird lines because i find that the most fun like sometimes it's just not the right play style but i think salvaging it forth from like a bad spot cooking you know like coming up with innovative stuff i think is my strongest aspect but again it's not as prevalent in these these last few sets but okay so worst aspect though i would say by far is my mental i'm more prone to tilt but you know i mean who isn't sometimes you know how would you define your coaching or mentorship style i would define i'm very interactive with the student instead of just teaching how to play the game i want to understand how they play the game and what they do and help them develop how they think about the game instead of like uh, giving the the fish you give the rod right i think there's some people who have very like harsh personalities and are very hard on their students and i try to not also just see where your fundamental issues are as a player i'm always trying to see like okay what what are the the trends that i'm noticing when i when I coach you? I think usually when I've coached some other people, for TFT at least, I like to ask a lot of questions. I prefer doing VOD reviews over like live gameplay because it's less chaotic and you get to just sit there and then like talk about uh, decisions and then you're a lot more informed on what mistakes they're actually making rather than trying to like play the actual game. So you usually I'll like talk about meta, maybe itemization, positioning and whatnot. I think my teaching style is more on like trying to help people improve like their their intuition and their kind of understanding of how the game works and how to get better at playing the game rather than like how to learn a patch or how to be good on like a patch or during a set and sort of just like how to be good not only just like tft but kind of strategy games in general because they're all all somewhat similar my style is what i've seen work best uh, for myself and other people in strategy games which is to start with trying to understand what the students errors are in their in their understanding basically in your in your mental model of the game what are your misconceptions and you find out what these are through asking questions, through VOD reviews, through stats analysis, and you work from there. Typically, these these things that you can uncover about your about your, your misunderstandings are improvements that are um, independent of a specific patch or set, which is really useful, right? Because I, um, at the same time, not to say that I don't you know, also focus on just meta and patches, I'm, I'm competing myself. And so uh, ideally, you know, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to get the best of both worlds because I'm focusing on having to know the specifics of a given patch. But at the same time, my, my focus is always towards like fundamentals, figure out what your flaws are in that sense. And that will carry on regardless of, of patches or sets. And that's sort of where I like to focus on. I I think the goal of uh, my mentorship with a with a student would be to find like repeatable patterns that you can recognize and actually apply not just like let's say we're, we're watching over a, an old game or like a current game and like there's something that you should be doing that you're not i want you to really be able to recognize it in future games and not just like no i should have done it this game but then have no clue the next like following game so i think the goal would really to be um to find those those patterns and and make sure they're drilled into you so you you uh you, you don't really make those mistakes
Yeah. I don't believe in like a one size fits all approach at all. Whether that's like life coaching, whether that's ward reviewing, whether that's like neither of those, and just like maybe backseating somebody else and watching them play and try to ask questions while you're seeing somebody else play. You know, so it'll depend very much from person to person. So I have to adapt based on the, the players. The way I do that is I always try to start with the VOD review because I want to find what their biggest uh, problems are ASAP. My philosophy is tackle the biggest problem and work down from there. So then if I see like someone's really mismanaging your econ and it's hindering them, like a lot of will work at that. And then maybe I'll add a second one that I think is a big problem. And then once we tackle big problems, we see big progress, then I'll start fine tuning the other things because there's no point overloading them with every single problem you have to fix right off the bat because if it's not productive it's just information overload. My philosophy has always been just tackle the worst issues first and then work up from there. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and again if you're interested the link to sign up will be below and a written handbook is available as well in case you want to get the nitty gritty details. The discord is free to join for anybody so feel free to join as well in case you have any other questions. Take care guys. Happy climbing.